right, if we're doing shore-based boat operations, it implies that either the hazard that's downriver from the objective is uh, so hazardous that we don't want to be completely reliant upon motor-based operations, or it implies that the water is too shallow to effectively operate our motors in, either one of those two applications. So understand with the first one, what we're saying is we've got a low head, something below us that we're, that, uh, if we lose motor control and the boat careens towards that objective, it's going to be bad things. And we don't have a, a, another uh, option in place to facilitate rescue for our own personnel, okay? And then the shallow one is self-explanatory. So we're going to progress from a two-line tether to a four-line tether to a movable control point application. Always build up your shore-based operations from simplicity to complexity based on what you need. So in a two-line tether or a two-line tether operation, what we're going to do is we're going to start on our mirror side. We're going to pick a deployment point that is far enough upriver that as we navigate across the river by paddles to get to the other side, we're going to hit the objective we want to hit. Does that make sense? So if we start too far down river based on the current and we start paddling, we end up way down here, that's not going to be effective. So make sure that you start up high enough that you're going to hit the, the benchmark that you have on the far shore. So look at your anchors that are littering this, this far side bank. Make sure that that tree is significant enough to support what it is you're trying to attach to it. Um, or that that bank line has enough working area to accommodate the personnel that's going to be required to manipulate that line. Okay. So we're starting on this near bank, we're going to put two guys in our craft. When you use craft for these applications, the lighter and the more mobile the craft, the better. So ocean and banana boats, um, the Tatinga rip craft, those are both great options for this type of platform. Number one, because they're not going to take on water and sink. Number two, because they're light, they're portable, and they're easy to paddle. Get your two guys in the boat, set a good ferry angle upriver from your objective. Start paddling with that ferry angle. That's going to navigate the boat over to this direction. If the river base is narrow enough that you can uh, effectively accomplish this by paddles and have a tag line attached to the front of the boat, that's great. You can bang out one side of the application right from the start. So your tenders on this side are going to go ahead and attach one line to the boat. As it's ferrying across, you got to watch attaching that line to the nose of the boat because as soon as it catches current or gets in the water or guys are pulling taut on it, it's manipulating your ferry angle and you're having to counteract that as paddlers. So you may elect to put a third in the boat if you can that's going to mind that line center mass in the boat so that it's not changing the, the deflection or the ferry angle on the boat. Do I understand that? Okay. You ferry across, you hit your objective. Once you hit your objective, Make sure you get the boat in an anchored position, get one of those guys or two of those guys offshore and attach the other line to the boat. You're then going to be able to deploy the boat with two attachment lines to the nose of the boat. If you want to go down river, each of these tending teams are just going to simply deploy rope out, allowing the, the boat to go down towards the objective and procure your victim. You may be throwing rope to the victim. You may be reaching to the victim with a gin pole or a grappling line. Once you get the victim in the boat, then you're going to go ahead and pull tension on both of these lines uh, to work this boat upriver or towards one bank or the other. As the current increases, so increases the hardware required at each of these points to manage these lines. If we can manage them manually, that's the easiest intervention, right? We put a lot of guys on it, guys can move rope. If we can't manage these lines effectively, then we have to establish anchor points and then use descent control devices or mechanical advantage systems on those lines as needed to manipulate the craft in the current. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's our two line tether. If we progress to a four line tether, then we're also attaching lines to the rear of the boat and putting 10 teams below the objective. So if our victim is in this location, these lines would have to be being minded somewhere down in this location. That would facilitate their ability to not just pull the boat down towards where that victim is, but also to allow rope to play out. It just gives you more control points, more ferry angle ability, uh, and more management of the overall boat orientation on the river. Same deployment applications. Once you've built your, your two, 
you can pull this boat back over the river, attach the rear point, have that rear point already pre-attached, you end up with your four.